I want to finish my pop tart. What flavor? Brown sugar cinnamon, the only real flavor. I mean, it's definitely top tier, but I mean, there are other top tier flavors, Ross. Mm. Mm. Come on. Mm. <laughs> Dude, my personal favorite is the like chocolate fudge ones because then you warm them up and they're like a little brownie. Basically. My wife likes s'mores. Oh, that's the same reason. One. Oh. Mm. The only other acceptable is strawberry frosted. Oh, yeah, that's a good one too. I mean, that's like generic. That's like Pop Tart 101. Right. It can't be having another fruit flavor either. Like the blueberry one is all right, but it's not It's not the same as strawberry, you know? It's way too much. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the DLF Trade Show, your premier source for trade based information, not only on the DLF YouTube, but on YouTube in general. Not only on YouTube in general, on the internet. Whoa. I'm going to do this for a few more seconds just to let it soak in. The whole wide world web. The whole wide, wide world web. Wide world web. The whole world wide web. Wide web. Wide web. <laughs> okay. We are here yet again after another week to have some reactions. And they're not necessary, not necessarily reactions to things that specifically happened right now. But, you know, trends and things that we finally have enough trades where we can use the trade finder effectively and talk about it uh and i say that because the first one right away we're going to talk about tua which made me so freaking sad because i went to the jets dolphins game and i did not get to see tua play and oh, that no. game was not fun <laughs> to watch like i couldn't even i didn't get to see the waddle dance i mean there was Nothing great. I mean, Michael Carter scored two touchdowns. That made me happy, but that's... that's... You saw a little bit of Brees Hall. You saw that, like, 80-yard receiving catch he had. Yeah, 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 but what happened right after it? And then Michael Carter scored. Michael Carter scored then... that touchdown. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so Tua got hurt. We still have zero timetable as to when he's coming back or, honestly, what exactly they're listing his injury as. Like, I'm sure they put concussion, but... He's back at practice. I saw... a. A report this morning that he's back at practice and i think they're targeting a week or two from now that's amazing that actually makes me insanely happy especially you'll, you'll see later in the show um but like as a human being i'm a fan of tua so yes so let's let's get into some trades um tua on a 12 team super flex league was traded for kenny pickett and christian watson tua coming in at 479 pickett 206 which you know we also just saw him arrive as the starting quarterback of the Steelers and Christian Watson at 66 total of 272. Ugh. Okay. No. <laughs> that's all I got for this. That's your only answer. Like I, okay. We'll talk when we get down to Russ's inbox about a very specific example like this, like, Let's say you're a competing team and you have Tua, he gets hurt, you need to make a move. This isn't the move you make. You don't go pick up Kenny Pickett and Christian Watson. If you're rebuilding and you have Tua and he gets hurt, why do you move him? And yeah. why do you move him for this? Um, like, do you have a better reaction to this than I do? I get the drop down from Tua to Kenny if the plus... Like was you, not need a, you, you need more than another Kenny to make this trade worthwhile for me. You know, it's like actually really Kenny's funny. 206, I need more than 206 coming back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, that's what the analyzer also says as well. You know, um, it's actually funny whenever you think about this. Like, if you would have said to somebody four months ago, right before their rookie draft, you'd be like, hey, I want to give you two 2022 firsts. That are like the 106 and the 109 for Tua. That would probably get accepted. I would have said and it, and it probably would have turned into Kenny Pickett and Christian Watson for a lot of people. If you just traded away Tua, you want your quarterback back, and then you're taking the high upside shot on a wide receiver. That's just where we're. And then, but now you see how far you know Kenny Pickett has hasn't done anything to change one way or another if his value's gone up or down. Watson has certainly gone down <laughs> for sure. Like he's. He's panning out to be every second since he was drafted. 
his stock has been going down. He's panning out to be the bust of this class. Um, At least which... for this year, because like right away, they're just like, well, Christian Watson was, he was a future asset to draft. It, uh, it's so bad. Um, if I replace Christian Watson with Chris Olave, are you That's in? That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. But what if it was um, George Pickens? I, he's, I mean, he was good. That was never the issue with Pickens. Um, he is actually showing out faster than I thought he would. Like, I thought they would... This is a very wrong phrase. I thought they would bury him in the depth chart a little longer. Like, I thought mm. they would be feeding Deontay and, and Chase Claypool more than they are. But I think that offense is so bad, it just doesn't matter anymore. They're doing whatever they can. And while Pickens and Claypool can both be seen as deep guys, like a little similar, Pickens has that fight in him that Claypool does not have. And like he is, when when guys go to press him on the line, Pickens has been knocking them to the ground. He and just pushes them over. That's the most Steelers thing ever. Like I could just picture Heinz Ward putting a, his hand in some dude's face mask and chucking him to the ground. And that's before the play starts. Like. Like that that that's a Steelers thing. So I mean, like this dude is gonna be a Steeler for life. Like I just they, I, it would be strange to see this guy go. And I trust the organization enough that it'll be fine. But right now, if you're telling me pick it, ooh, and that's a stack too. Pick and 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 pick uh, Olave would have me a lot closer because I mean that dude is just the real thing. I mean that's what it, and he's shown it, and there's no reason for that to ever change. But still, I don't think so. I think I still just ride with Tua, assuming I feel like I'm within a year of building my team. Like if I'm if I have like only Tua and a couple of picks, and my team is crap, maybe I do this to sort of have more assets to build around. Mm -hmm. But it's like I'm getting very specific to make me want to get away from Tua, even with swatching out swapping out Watson with someone like Olave. Makes sense to me. Yep. This next one actually makes more sense to me as well, a little bit. Tua straight up for a tw early 23 first and Terry McLaurin. Uh Tua 479. The early first is 604 by itself terry mclaurin 300 so i mean caution team b is giving up the highest value asset and the most pieces in the deal the reason it's makes a little bit of sense is you're getting a, a first and an old receiver mm -hmm. so like if you're telling me you're competing and you had kenny pickett geno smith as your qb3 so you're not really at a loss for qb right now that you can add terry mclaurin and a chance for Bijan or CJ Stroud or Bryce Young next year, that's a baller move. Like, I like this from both sides because I love just putting Tua on my team. Would I would I be willing to send an early first and Terry McLaurin? Oh, right, sorry. That's tough. Because the thing is, if I'm the Tua manager, I don't think I send him for an early first because I know he's coming back and I know he's good. So why do that by itself? Even though value-wise, it's probably a trade that we will see many go down. Would I... Eh, does Terry McLaurin change enough on either side to make me change my mind? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it does. I mean, it makes me sad to think, but it really it, it does. Because like I said before... If I happen to have Gino, who, you know, QB1 Gino Smith right now, as my QB3, I can slot him in as my QB2, and I just got an extra flex play for free. Yeah. McLaurin's so, value. Team, yeah. And honestly, heck, if I'm not competing, I take this anyway, and I flip McLaurin. Like, this right. is a really good trade. Like, I, I, I wanted to not take it because I love Tua, but you have to. I'm actually kind of surprised that this deal was done uh, like both these deals were done within the time frame of Tua's second horrific injury. Um, so th nothing has really changed for Tua outside of we've just got a little bit more clarity on his situation that he is going to be returning this month, or at least that's what the Dolphins organization is planning. See, I did not know that when we started recording, I've been on meetings all 
<laughs> man, all week. So yeah. like I have I've been a little behind on the news. So that that's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Right. But I mean this was this trade was done obviously before that news. So I'm actually kind of surprised that this was even able to get done. Cause like you said, I feel like the early first um makes a lot of sense because you're basically rolling the dice that you can just hit the reset button on the quarterback with potentially a better prospect in Stroud or Young. Fight Maybe they tongue. find themselves Hold on. in take a step back. That's I mean I said Not potentially. I said Not potentially. Ready to hear that. Or you get Bijan and then you can do whatever the heck you want because he's <laughs> the running back one already. He's he's B. John Robinson. Um, and then yeah, you get Terry McLaurin, and his value has definitely dropped since the season started because he's now the wide receiver three on his own team. Um, but he's still Terry McLaurin. Like that's still like, like he's not Chase Claypool. Like he's not dead like Chase Claypool or Christian Watson. He's still right. worth I think a second. We'll let you talk first now, especially because we're talking about Najee Harris. So this is this is some close to home stuff for you. I brought up the idea about talking about Najee because i don't know man this is so weird like the volume is still there that offense has been not good the offense is about to change but then we have to take in new quarterback crappy schedule for the next three or four games and not scoring a lot of fantasy points so is he still that top tier running back for everyone and that's kind of what I was very curious to see what these trades came out as. So let's, I mean, jump into it. Najee Harris, 12-team Superflex. Big trade. Najee, a late first, and Josh Palmer for Cortland Sutton, Devonta Smith, and a 23-third. Man, two months ago, this trade gets done without the first in there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Najee is... Still in at 639, a late first at 265. Josh Palmer at 28 for a total of 932. Cortland Sutton, 291. Devonta Smith, 236. And a 23 third, 49 for a total of 576. So, yes, the analyzer still has this with Najee as that premier running back. So, we are looking at an early, not an early first difference, like a, yeah, a mid first difference. Like, this is off but go you talk first talk about Najee talk about this trade go um this is another one where I was I, I saw that this is the most recent trade for Najee Harris in the trade finder um done I think yesterday or the day before and I was honestly shocked when I saw it because I know Najee has been really really hard to move for a lot of people who have him in dynasty I know I've gotten you know just a couple dms of people just saying what are you trying to trade Najee for right now like like, how bad is it? Um, or is he just a hold and I just ride it out and hope that he just returns to what he was last year? And to be honest, I don't really think he's going to return to what he was last year. Like, he was getting massive receiving volume last year that he's not getting this year. Um, and Jalen, like, there's actually a legitimate <laughs> competition for cutting into at least a little bit of his work. Like he's not like a 90% running back anymore. He is a 70% running back, which is still fantastic. I mean, that's like top five in the that, league in terms yeah, of that is still work work share numbers. Yeah. But it's not what he had last year. And all those things were really the only things that were keeping him up to being a good fantasy asset was he was getting an insane amount of volume and an insane amount of snaps and a insane amount of receiving volume and any drop in any of that is going to constitute into a drop in fantasy production and just overall fantasy value. And that's what we're seeing right now. He's not good enough to, you know, do things on his own whenever his offensive line can't block for him. Uh, like, he's not Saquon Barkley. He's not Christian McCaffrey. He's not Jonathan Taylor. Uh, he's just, I think we need to readjust our our expectations and, like, on our just basically our view of what Najee is as much more of a you know, a, a J.K. Dobbins kind of player or, or like a, you know. Why? What are you doing here? Like just disparaging all my favorite players. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. But like, I think that's much more where we need to align him with. Like he, he is Joe Mixon on a really, really bad team. That like is basically what we have going on here. Um, And just personally from a Steelers fan, I still hate the pick. I still hate that they drafted him in the first round. That was the worst thing that they could have possibly done. Um, Such a Steelers thing to do, though. Um, Sorry. So right um, now, Najee's averaging 10.32 points per game. Yes. 
Like, is that what we were expecting? He's not scoring any touchdowns. That's the, the he's he is a touchdown dependent running back right now. I mean, we're looking at 10, 14, 13, 7, and 7. Kenneth Walker could come in and do that exact same thing on the Seahawks. And I think we could value Kenneth Walker higher than Najee Harris in a month. Yeah, Jeff. with Geno Smith QB1, of course we can. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's so, having Najee, I think right now is just so hard. With that being said, I don't think I would make this deal because I wouldn't be giving up Najee and a first for two at best wide receiver twos. Yeah. Um, yeah. What it comes down to it, you, you can't, no matter how much you want to get rid of Najee, this isn't the way to do it, especially because like if you're rebuilding and you want to get rid of the running back, you're also not getting rid of a first. Right. So, I mean, at least you're getting a young wide receiver out of this. I, I love Sutton, but he's 27 already, which case his dynasty value is going down every day, especially with that offense looking so weird. Right. So, yeah, I just I don't see this. OK, this next trade is a little mm -hmm. bit more interesting. 14 team, one quarterback, Najee Harris and a 2024 20, second for a 23 first, which you did not specify, and Elijah Moore. Najee Harris, 662. The 24 second is 90 at a total of 752. And the 23 first, 384.2. Elijah Moore, 383, total of 767. So this is even in the analyzer. And I have to be honest, a trade I would do to get rid of Najee. Elijah Moore is still very good. I really like the player. I think that offense can click better than it is now. Um, I think the more Brees shows out like he did last week and can keep doing that, it'll open up the passing game a little bit more. And hopefully Zach Wilson becomes good. <laughs> hopefully. Um, and it, yeah, Garrett Wilson is showing that he is and deserves to be the wide receiver one, but I still think there's plenty there for Elijah Moore. And here you're, again, not really buying at a wide receiver one price. You're talking about the equivalent of a first. A mid first, and that's not. I mean, this year, okay, firsts are different than normal, but still, a price in, a, in the analyzer at 383, you're not talking about a top 12 wide receiver, and that's not what you're getting or looking for in this. So, I, I like this a lot. Yeah, I didn't specify um, what the first was because if it is a mid first, and the value on a mid first is the same as just it's a the normal same. first, yeah. Um, I was trying to remember. He's two and three or three and two. The person's first. Is yeah. That what it is. yeah so just, at that point, you just leave it at mid. Yeah. I put it at mid. So thinking about it, like, I think I would probably do that because I like the rest of the pieces too. I, I would take Najee still over just a random 23 first because um, I think he would fit into that class right around in there. And I at least have seen Najee in the NFL. And, and even though it's not great now, I still know what the upside is. We've seen his ability to put up a lot of fantasy points. Yeah. Right. Um, now, if that were to swing any closer to early, I'd probably take that over Najee straight up. Fair enough. Um, to where yeah. I'm going to say like what top four without thinking four or about five it. somewhere in there. Um, the, the hard part about this is that it's one QB too. So, so you don't get those quarterbacks in there. But you need like top two for it to be straight up. Eh, like it's, I still think it's three or four because I would still take probably myself and Jackson Smith and Jigba over Najee as well. Myself as Jordan Addison. Yeah, so, I, okay, I was, figured that one out. <laughs> Thank you. I did not think you were just now. Like, that was your announcement. You were declaring for the draft I'm declaring right now. declaring for the draft, yes. Um, so, so, so because this is mid-first in a 14-team, one-quarterback league, the rest of it has to make sense. And I do think that the – like, I would still take Elijah Moore pretty easily over a 24-second. So, I oh, think yeah. that – and th this entire trade, I think, is, like, a perfect example – of what you should be trying to do if you're trying to sell off Najee Harris and Dynasty is yeah. it's just finding a team that maybe needs a running back. They're middle of the pack. They're you know they're three and two, something like that. Go try to get there first and and figure out some other stuff. Maybe they have a player who's like Elijah Moore isn't really producing for them right now, but you think you think still has potential down the road. Um, and and see if you can swing something like that, you know. So I think this is like a, a perfect deal to move off from Najee. Okay, we talked about Damian Pierce like five weeks ago, when it was peak hype season, except 
what we thought was peak hype season. Well, we thought, yeah, now it's kind of uh, <laughs> peak hype season. And the, but the, I mean, the thing is, right now, it's not really hype. He's doing it. Week one, he put up like six points, barely touched the ball. But ever since, it's been around 20 points a week. Like, he's there for now. And what I'm really curious to see about some of these trades is that, is he being treated as the answer at running back for the Texans? Like, that's, that's the big thing, because it was like with James Robinson, a, a big part of it was going undrafted, but also it's just like, well, they're going to draft a running back. Mm -hmm. Okay, they didn't draft one this year, but next year they're going to draft a running back. And, they, you know, they did draft one the next year, but it's always that, well, they're building their team, so we're not going to assume that this person is the answer. So I'm curious to see what these trades are, if they're very this season or if they do make it seem like I'm going to have a running back for the next two, three years. Right. So, I mean, let's go in. 12 team, one quarterback, George Pickens and Damian Pierce for Christian McCaffrey. See, this is a little bit seeming like it's uh, for the future trade because, well, first of all, George Pickens, 235, Damian Pierce, 215, total of 450. Christian McCaffrey still at 722, even though he is not producing like 722. Like, hey, he's done well the past couple weeks. I think we need to like, scratch that down a little bit. He's, he's played well the past couple weeks. I mean, yeah, okay. He, the past two weeks, has put up over 20 points. Yeah. Uh, he is averaging 19 points per game, which is more than I thought it was, because the first few weeks, we're talking 15, 16, and 14, where it's just like, okay, those wow. are decent. Horrible. Numbers. <laughs> uh, yeah, so putting in those last two weeks does make you feel a lot better. Oh, man. Austin Eckler, RB1 points per game. Nice. Bring it back, baby. Um, but still, I don't think... I'm not valuing Christian McCaffrey as the league winner he once was. And I think sure. that's probably across the board, but still. Um, I love the idea of going for Pickens and Pierce. And no, I like the idea of going for Pickens if you're backing off from McCaffrey. This trade specifically for Pickens and Pierce, A, you're not getting enough for Christian McCaffrey, even at my so-called lowered value. But I like the idea of this trade because if you are competing, like you have Christian McCaffrey, but he's just not doing it for you, you're getting decent scoring out of Pierce and you still position yourself for the future with a 21-year-old wide receiver that we talked about plenty a few minutes ago, so we're not going to do it again. But yeah, like I need another first. <laughs> like this is, this is off. Like it's, it's, it's close. I was going to say, would you do, instead of Pickens, would you just do Damian Pierce and we'll just say a mid-23 first? Pierce and a first? Yeah. I've seen a lot of Pierce and a second for Javante or Pierce and a 24 first for Javante trains. I know we're not talking about Javante right now at all, but what's the difference between Javante and McCaffrey? Is it that big? Well, you know, even now it is. Injury, but <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, yes, no, early. If it was, especially in a one quarterback, if it was early, I would take an early first and Pierce for McCaffrey. Yes. If it was a super flex, I would take a mid first and Pierce for McCaffrey. Because okay. again, even if I'm competing, I'm still getting good production out of Pierce for this year and really self setting myself up for the future with that super flex first. So yeah, but this right here, it's not this. I get the value is pretty similar between what you're saying and what this trade is, but it's still not the same. Yeah. No, I, 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 when I saw this, I was like, this is not enough for Christian McCaffrey either. Like, I get the idea, um, especially because, you know, when you look at just fantasy scoring on the season, Christian McCaffrey and Damian Pierce have been pretty similar. Yeah. Then you also get, you know, we talk about all the time trading down at running back and you hit the reset button on the running back, especially when there's a four year age difference. And then you pick up, who I think we can both agree on is an ascending young wide receiver, at least in dynasty value in George Pickens. I like that idea. I just, I don't think that's enough now currently. Exactly. This, yes. this trade might look really good in a year. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, we're talking one side going up the other side going, it's really hard to do with. I got like, you. We're passing you. like strangers in the night on this one. Um, but it's not there now correct and that's when you what you should be trading for you should be trading for values at least in the near future because 
you can do more. Like, unless you've been trying to ship McCaffrey for the past two weeks after he's been scoring better and it hasn't been working, and then you just get frustrated and you take this, I get it. I don't like it, but I get it. But, like, mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> This next one I like a lot more. Uh, actually, this is, goes back to the trades we talked about five weeks ago, where in a 12-team Superflex, Damian Pierce got traded for a late 23 first and Isaiah Spiller, who I'm just sad he's not that second guy there. Um, Damian Pierce, 162. Caution Team B is giving up the highest value asset and the most pieces in the deal because a late 23 first is 265.1. Isaiah Spiller, four, uh, 32, for a total of 297. I mean, I'm still... I don't think I'm still at the point where I give Pierce for any first because you should honestly be getting a bigger plus than Isaiah Spiller for a late first with the way he's playing right now. That's really what it just comes with the way Pierce is playing right now. Right. Like, I don't think this 162.3 is super accurate mm -hmm. regarding his actual trade value. So if I'm getting a late first, even in a super flex, I think I want someone who's a little bit either better dart throw or if i'm still competing and just don't believe in damian pierce as doing what he's doing someone i can plug in as a last flex spot so just someone a little even if it's low valued someone more usable than this so the team that traded for damian pierce that was his own first round pick he oh, is great. currently five and oh love in it. this league beautiful um, i mean it's it's early um like I wouldn't want to spend my first until I need to spend my first. Yeah. Like Pierce, Pierce can get hurt tomorrow and then you're just screwed because you don't have the the assets to move for a running back when you need one. But yes, like this is what you do when you're competing and you still hold your first. You bolster your team. Usually you do it when you need it or at least like if you play in a league with a trade deadline or, you know, when you're getting to the playoffs, like that's when you do it even if you don't necessarily need it yet. But man, if you believe in Pierce, go send what you think is going to be the one twelve and go get him. That's that's fine. Oh, I knew for sure. Like, I was looking at this dude's roster and I'm like, oh, man, this dude has really skirted by for being five and zero. So I looked at the points for, and he is one, two, three. He is basically tied for fourth in points for. I mean, that's not. There are three other teams that are outscoring him by more than a hundred. Well, 100 points or more that are three and two and four and one. Okay, that's rough. That's so, a very big point difference. This this and, is why you go look at all play. This is why if you use MFL, reports, standings, power rank, it will give you your potential points, your all play record, uh, so much information that is useful to see if you're actually good compared to what your record is. Because I think we addison just pointed out the randomness that a schedule really creates like your record doesn't necessarily mean too much if you don't take other things into account in which case this person does think they're still a contender and they want to make a bigger push because they have that record where it will be hard to fall out of a playoff spot at this point at five and oh like there's not that many more weeks that he'll have to lose a lot of games to get knocked out of a top five spot so right. i just yeah, man, i just really team. I really struggle with this one though cuz like I can't I still am sitting here and I can't imagine trading a first round pick for a day 3 running back. And like I get that he's producing now and I get that he looks like he's going to be the guy for the next couple of years, but what if he's not? Like they could so easily draft another running back. Oh yeah. In the 3rd or 4th round and that's comparable or even better draft capital than what Damian Pierce got. Or you get Aaron Jones. Yeah, like, it's just, like, I just can't imagine that. I would much rather, like, if I had that first, and you said you could either have Kenneth Walker or Damian Pierce right now for that late first. I'm taking Kenneth Walker 10 times out of 10. I'm only taking Kenneth Walker now because of the penny injury. If this was sure. last week, I would not. I would take Pierce over Walker. Okay, so I agree with that. But then right now, as of right now, this trade was done this week. <laughs> so they knew that, you know, Kenneth Walker was going to be the guy for the remainder of the year. Yeah. And potentially that that would then be the the downfall, and that would that would be the demise of Rashad Penny. So he wouldn't be back if Kenneth Walker performs for the rest of the year. I mean, he's also a free agent, but that's besides the point. Right. That's what I mean. Is that they're not bringing him back. Yeah. And if he does come back, it's still going to be Kenneth Walker. But like, 
I, I, I still think that you could trade a couple of seconds or do some sort of package that's not a first round pick and go get Leonard Fournette, you know, go get Aaron Jones. <laughs> like there, I feel like there's so many different ways to acquire a productive running back that doesn't require you sending your first round pick. And especially doesn't require you sending your first round pick for a day three player. And this isn't, I, I understand that like, I've not been the Damian Pierce guy this entire season this I mean, entire year on it too but um he is scoring and that's all that really matters right now sure sure i would just i would take the first over a lot of other running backs as well too like that's just that's not me just hating on damian pierce like i would take a first for cam Akers right now i take a first for jk dobbins you know i would take a first for josh jacobs right now like that like there's a lot of other running backs out there that i have in the same cell category for a a late 23 first that's not just Damian Pierce. It's just if I were given the the chance to buy any one of those guys with a first, Damian Pierce would not be at the top of the list. Yeah, you don't know if this was the top of this guy's list. It just would happen. Maybe, but I'm, I'd be but trying again, so hard. Again, I else. don't think you panic and spend your first in general for a running back. Right. But we we are getting off course, and I want to talk about the fun I had yesterday. You did have fun. So this was technically this technically is not in my inbox anymore and i may have sent one or two of these um oh man you put it all into one and it got super confusing let me pull up my link and actually <laughs> so it's a 14 team super flex league otherwise it's very ta scoring the 1.75 per per tight end reception that kind of stuff <sighs> i i liked my team more than they are producing well <laughs> Um, mm. my running backs were AJ Dillon and Zeke. I really just, I thought they would be here for this season. They are not, um, T Higgins is missing too much time and it hurts my feelings, but I mean, I'm never le leaving T Higgins, um, and Dalton Schultz. Like I, I had a really good starting lineup and I thought it's, I don't care. I'm going to, I bolt my starting lineup. I had nothing behind it because I could survive one or two injuries need be, but two injuries with three players not performing like they're supposed to and I'm screwed. And of course I traded my first away in the startup. So I decided I was going to blow it up. Usually the first thing you do when you blow up a league is go get your first back. Um, I may not have done that because I wasn't thinking. Um, the first trade I did, well, I, I was contacted after setting my trade bait with who did I, like? you know, I, I still put Zeke <laughs> up there, but I put Kyler and Stafford, AJ Dillon, Zeke. I did not put T Higgins on there, but I did put Hollywood Brown, Kelsey, Dalton Schultz. Like, like these are the players I had, and I just not doing great. You know, Stafford should have been doing much better than he is. And someone DMs me, and they're just like, "All right, I have Tua. I want Kelsey from your team. How do we work something out?" So the trade we ended up pulling off was Tua, a 24 first and a 23 third for Kelsey and Stafford. I still feel like I gave this guy a good deal. Um, in my mind, Kelsey and Tua are kind of equal. Yeah. Um, Kelsey scoring as many points as he is and Tua being a young quarterback in a 14 team super flex league. Yeah. Like, like to me, I crossed them off about Stafford for 24 first and 23 third, but wanting to rebuild Stafford's not playing well. So I was concerned I wouldn't get a better deal anyway. So I figured if it gets me to a, and it gets my rebuild started, let's just do it. Mm -hmm. To which I hit accept and I'm just like, oh crap, right. I don't have my first. So I messaged the dude that does <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> Well, I send him a trade. I send him an offer of Kyler for my 23 first and a late 23 first. And he goes to me, well, if you sent me this before I saw your other trade, I would have considered it a lot more. No. Which, let's be honest, is the right answer. But also, anytime someone is trying to trade for their 23 first, know why understand that they are doing this so they can blow their team up yeah. it shouldn't have been a surprise to him anyway i got very lucky because all they did was counter back 
asking for my 23 second. To which I reply, jerk. Because clearly I can't decline this based on what will probably be the 203. But it sucks because I just lost the 203. <laughs> you know? Like, sure. like that's kind of why this is this trade itself was why I wanted to really still talk about this, even though there were trades that were done. This is my second league where I've had to fight to get my first back. And it is the second time where I felt I probably overpaid to go get it. I don't remember how much we talked about it in Trade Addicts 1 on this show, because I'm on too many shows and I talk about things too often that I never remember where I'm talking about them. But it was a fight for months to get my first back. This one was very, very easy. Um, and what it comes down to, if the person you're trading with is smart, they're going to make it hard for you. In which right. case, I don't care if it's the 201, you send it away to get your first back. Like that should not make you decline an offer because you can't rebuild if you don't have your first. It, it, it's just the answer because the why score less points if it's not making your team better? Like you can't, you can. Like I, I call it retooling when you are getting younger but not completely tanking the season. And I use the phrase tanking lightly because I know that is a very unhappy word for a lot of people. But I mean, let's face it, that's what it is. You're trying to lose to get the 101. So don't let small things like a second round pick, regardless if it's the 201, stop you from this because the second you do, you're going to do better things. And while he didn't put it on here, I got an offer right away for Zeke Elliott to get a second and a fourth. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, cool. I was going to start sending out Zeke for a second to everyone anyway. I got an extra four out of it. I mean, cool. Like, and I'm also, again, more willing to do something like this because I have my first. If I didn't have my first, why am I getting a second and losing points and just making someone else get a better draft pick? Sure. Yeah, I love what you were able to do. Like, if you if you basically just say that Kelsey for the first, you know, evens out Stafford for, um, you know, maybe Tua and the 24 first, and then you got, you know, Kyler for... And or, or maybe it was Stafford for your first and then Kyler for Tua and the other 23 first, you know, then that makes a lot of sense then too. Like, I, and I know that like putting it all together like this, like makes it a little bit harder to read, but your individual trades are really, really liked. And when you put it all together, I think it makes a lot of sense. Then you also add in the fact that you're able to sell Zeke for a second, I think is really good value right now. Cause I feel like Zeke is also one of those players. That's just really hard to trade away. And I think yeah. the fact that you even got a second is kind of impressive. <laughs> I was ready to have to like package Zeke together to make a move for getting him off my team, but I was very thrilled that someone sent that to me like right away. Yeah. I, I, I got one offer of Zeke for a second sent out, and then this person added a fourth, and I'm like, yay, I would have sent him for a second. <laughs> and yeah, a third or fourth is whatever, but it's still something. Yeah. So this, this like, this is the part about rebuilding that's really really fun is like if you have if you have the assets that are still valuable but you just want to start tearing it down and you're able to make these like huge moves for multiple firsts and be able to you know have three four five firsts in one year and maybe another couple in you know the following year that makes your rebuild a pretty quick but then also be like really really fun <laughs> yeah um like i now have i have two firsts this year because i just got them and i still had my first for 24 and i added that guys so i have two this year two next year there you go and i'm sure you're not even done yet i'm sure you got oh, God, no. No, no 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 i'm working on a deal to send away hollywood which makes me sad but i'll get another first out of it there you go and maybe you might even get a first for dylan that maybe would like, be maybe nice. like a, I a mean, 24 he, first for Dylan, something like that, you know? That, I mean, that's going to be my goal. He's not scoring well enough for me to get a 23 first out of him. Right. I mean, of course, he puts up 20 points the first game and then 7, 5, 9, 3 against the Giants. Against the Giants, AJ! Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, this has been another, like I said, amazingly fantastic, wonderful episode of the DLF Trade Show on the DLF YouTube channel. Subscribe, thumbs up, notification button and all of those fancy things that people say at the end of youtube shows uh russ fisher times the ad house addison hayes at amaze hayes underscore see me contributor <sighs> almost 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 left it out 
No, I'm not ready yet. Pro I'll, I'll probably leave it out next show because after singing happy birthday, it can't get worse. So <laughs> saying senior contributor doesn't really get anywhere. Oh man, I forgot to check the comments about how that went. I'm gonna have to do that afterwards. Go for it. But we'll see you next time.